Yo, 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 what's going on everyone? Tyler here from Biked Goods. Today I'm going to be walking you through a little guide for how to make your own homemade energy bars. And I also have a recipe here that I created myself. These are some salted caramel s'more bars. Caramel as in dates. Um, one is made here with, with rice cereal, the other is made with oats just to have a little variation and to have a little fun with it. But yeah, I'm going to walk you through the key components of making your own homemade energy bars, um, whether it's this recipe or your own that you want to create. So before we get into that, just to touch base quickly on what is an energy bar, well, it's exactly what, it, what it's called. It's, it's something that's made to give us energy and not slow us down, right? So the primary source of energy for us as cyclists is carbs. You can have a little bit of protein and fat in your energy bars, depending on the ride. If it's a little bit lower intensity, medium intensity type ride, it's okay to have those fats and proteins in there. If it's something a little higher intensity, shorter duration, we want our bars to be a little bit more um, carb forward. So. To start, when it comes to making your own homemade energy bars for these, or really any kind of energy bar, there's three things primarily that make up your energy bars. And that is your binders, your base ingredients, and then your add-ins or mix-ins. So in this case, the binding ingredients for these bars is primarily maple syrup, and dates and a little water if needed, depending on how dry or wet uh, your, your dates are. Next is the base component. And the base is the structure, kind of what holds everything together. So like you see here, I have two different kinds. One is made up of rice crisp. The other is made up of rolled oats or specifically quick rolled oats. They just um, bake um, a little bit faster here. And then we also have the graham crackers. And then last is the mix-ins, the add-ins, and that here is the chocolate chips and the marshmallows. And the marshmallows actually can act as a binder too because once you bake them, they expand a little bit and they help hold the ingredients um, together, but kind of works both ways there. So that's the primary ingredients, your binders, your base, and your add-ins. A few helpful um, tools once you have all that together is starting with something to help bind or blend your ingredients together. What I have here is the Vitamix, um, it's a high speed blender. I also use a food processor and you can kind of see the base of this machine back here um, for the blender. It also has a food processor attachment, which is super, super convenient because it's not another machine that you need to have. So a little less space being taken up in your cupboards, but I've used both before to make energy bars. Um, and I don't notice too much difference. I think the only thing really would be, you know, the high, the blender appliance. Um, when you have something with a little bit more liquid in, it usually comes together a little bit better. Whereas the food processor, if you really want to like chop or process or pulse ingredients, like nuts or, or more whole ingredients without the liquid, the food processor um, usually works better. So find something and you don't always need it, but find something that will help blend your binding ingredients together. Um, the next thing that comes in handy is just these large um, mixing bowls here. And that's where you'll add in your base ingredients. So either the rice or the oats, your crackers. So throw that in there, just stir it up a little bit. And that's where you add your, your binding ingredients um, and top mix, stir it together. Fold in your, your marshmallows, your chocolate chips. And now you basically have the entire makeup of your energy bar. So once you have that all ready to go, it's time to put it into some sort of baking appliance that will help you form these. So there's a few different ones that you can use. One here, this is just a little uh, baking dish. Here we have like a handy bar making um, dish or, or baking sheet here. If you really want to make perfectly square bars, this is your go-to. Um, you can also use a baking sheet. Um, <clears throat> another way to, to kind of put those together. And ultimately when it comes down to choosing one over the other, it's just a matter of like how thick or thin that you want your bars to be. 
So once you decide on what you want to use to help form your bars, the probably the most important piece to making an energy bar is like we want it to be compact and so that it doesn't fall apart once we take it out of the oven into our pockets and out with us on the trails. So pressing down your bars um, very thoroughly is important to, to help do that. So you can use something like a little rice paddle here to push it down once the, the entire energy bar mix is in there. Um, you can put parchment paper or like cling wrap over the top to really uh, press it down. Or you could even use something like the bottom of a glass here to, to press that down. So once you get your mix into your dish and press it down firmly, pop it in the oven, take it out, um, let it cool, and then cut into individual bars. And then the last piece, you know, we want to use energy bars to take um, to take out with us out on the trails and there's a few things that we can use to help transport um, These bars to make sure they stay compact and then they're just easy to unwrap eat and keep on riding so a few products here what I have is a uh, scratch paper 2.0 Really sweet product here. It's parchment lined aluminum foil. So basically you put your bar on the foil side wrap it like a little present and really easy to just store in your fridge and then take with you when you're ready to go out on a ride. Um, another product I found, or I found on Amazon, it's basically the same thing, it's just an entire roll, is this slick wrap, so same idea there. And then sometimes as well, I'll use these little stashers if I wanna take a couple bars with me, keep them a little bit more secure. Um, I'll just throw them in a stasher here. You can fit about two or three of them. It fits in my one liter hip pouch would fit in a top two bag. Uh, I've also put it in my back jersey pockets before. So pretty convenient size here to help carry um, your bars as well. So <clears throat> yeah, that, that's the guide right there. Um, what I love most about energy bars is that you get to put in the ingredients that you love and taste, um, or that you love, um, that taste good to you. So even though I have this recipe right here um, to share with you, doesn't mean you need to use it. Uh, I encourage you to go out and try and test and make your own version. Um, what I love about this recipe myself personally is it just brings me back um, to camping, hanging around the fire with friends and family when we used to go on trips back in the day when I was a little kid, um, when my wife and dog and I go camping out today. Um, it's just kind of those flavors, the, the spunkiness, the marshmallows turn a little bit brown when they're in the oven and it just kind of brings me back to those days so that kind of nostalgic feeling so once i'm out on a bike ride or eating one of these it just kind of brings me back to that puts me in a good mood and and that's what making your own cycling feel is all about making you feel good um, giving you that extra push to, to keep the pedals churning so hope this is helpful for y'all um, please share your recipes with me um, what you come up with and everything that you see here from ingredients, how to make your own energy bars, the tools and appliances that you see here, plus a few more are all linked out um, in this edition of Bites and Bikes. So check those out. Start whipping up a batch of energy bars and let me know what you come up with. Peace.